Sorry to say, but we're in trouble. Not you, but me. Because for a whole semester while I was in the seminary, I studied the Trinity. And I stand before you tonight to say, it's a mystery. <laughs> and it truly is a mystery. But perhaps I probably shouldn't feel so bad because there is a story told about St. Augustine who was a brilliant philosopher and a theologian. And he preoccupied himself with this doctrine of the Trinity. He wanted so much to be able to understand it, to be able to explain it to people logically. And one day as he was walking along the seashore and reflecting on this matter, he happened to see a little tiny child there. And the little tiny child began to dig a hole into the sand. And then with a little tiny cup, he would run to the sea. He would grab a little cup of water. He would bring it back to the hole and he would dump it in it. Back and forth he would go, back and forth, back and forth. And Augustine, he was so perplexed by this child and what he was doing that he approached the child and he said, what, what's, what are you trying to do? And the child simply explained that he was trying to empty the sea into this little tiny hole. St. Augustine said, well, that's nearly impossible to do. And the child looked into his eyes and he said, and your small little brain trying to comprehend the immensity of God. And the child disappeared. That child was Christ, trying to tell Augustine that our minds aren't capable of completely understanding this mystery of the Trinity. That doctrine of that inner relationship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in such a way that they're fully and equally God. Three different persons not all of them individually gods, but only one God. Yes, it is truly a mystery, truly a mystery. And I think the important thing that we have to understand this, week is, uh, this weekend on the Trinity is not to understand the how of the Trinity, but to understand the why. Why? Why did God reveal to us this mystery regarding the very nature of the supreme being? It was such a great mystery. Why would God even tell us about it? The importance of this doctrine lies in this. You and I, we are made in the image and likeness of God. We are created in his image and likeness. And the more we begin to understand God, the more we begin to understand ourselves. Experts in religion, they tell us that people always try to be like the God they worship. If the God that we worship is pleasure, then we're going to be people that are always seeking pleasure in our lives. If the God that we worship is money and riches in our lives, then that's what we're going to seek in our lives. If the God that we worship is charity, then we're going to be loving in our lives. Therefore, the question to ask ourselves that's more important today is, what does the doctrine of the Trinity tell us about the kind of God we worship? And what does it say about the kind of people that you and I should be? First of all, God doesn't exist in solit uh, solitary individualism. But God is a community, three persons. He's not a loner. That means that we as Christians are not meant to be isolated. A lot of times we think our faith is our own. 
I own it, I possess it, but boy, I don't need to tell it to anyone else. That's not what God is. God is a community that shares that, what he is, with the other persons of the Trinity. The other thing, too, the Trinity is truly uh, in love with one another. They're partners. There's an old saying that say, that say, two is company, but three is a crowd. The, sh- the Trinity shows us instead that three is actually community. It's love at its very best. Take the example of our human condition. We see that when a man is in love with a woman, they seal their love by producing a child. The three of them are not a crowd. The three of them are now a family. And isn't that who our God is? We're made in God's image and likeness. Just as God is, uh, just as God is God only in a trinity of a relationship, so we can only fully be human beings in that same type of relationship. The self needs to be in a horizontal relationship, others, and in a relationship with God. How many times we tend to forget. We look out across our world, and maybe we're in relationship with one another. But what about our relationship with God as well? My brothers and sisters, the Blessed Trinity It may be a mystery to us to completely understand, but what we know about it truly reveals who we need to be as human beings. As we celebrate this blessed trinity, it's not so much about the how, but the why. Do we truly understand the God that we worship? And as brothers and sisters in hope, do we reflect that same relationship with one another and the God that we worship in our world today?